uh, yeah, my recording was on maybe 20 minutes before the lecture, then I uh, stopped that, uh, so I don't record the uh, silence. Thanks for reminding. And I would appreciate it every time we have the lecture, somebody should just make sure that uh, it's being recorded. Okay. Uh, all right. So this is, so the classical, we uh, study the uh, uh, frequency domain analysis. We use the body plots, Nyquist plots, uh, Nichols charts. We use uh, uh, root locus, system design, uh, compensation techniques, compensation for lost uh, input or energy, and then we use some uh, control, uh, PID control. The modern control in modern theory, uh, which we will be uh, uh, using a hybrid approach, both classical and modern, the state space modeling, and that's where you have uh, like state diagrams, uh, use the eigenvalue analysis for stability, observability, and controllability. Uh, how do you observe a system? How do you control it? Uh, state equations, state transition matrix. We use uh, state space to transfer functions. Uh, we use transfer function to state space, the other which means the uh, backward. That's we use some transforms. Uh, the direct decomposition of transfer functions, parallel decomposition, and so on. So those are major topics, uh, but mostly in this lecture, I will be focusing on the left-hand side because without really understanding some of the basic concepts will be uh, difficult to move ahead here. Uh, quite often they give it in two different courses. One is the classical, or they call it the uh, feedback control systems, and this is the advanced control systems. Anyway, uh, this is what uh, control, the field of control system is, uh, uh, is about. Okay. So uh, those are some of the uh, textbooks, some of them, I think uh, the book which uh, most recommended here for this course is the one where uh, I think his name is uh, Ralph something, I forgot the author, but it's also called Modern Control Systems, Model Control Engineering, here called Control System Engineering by Norman Lice. And again, uh, we will be, um, uh, it's, uh, for us, uh, we can, you can use uh, uh, any reference of your choice. Sometimes you'll find tutorials which are very uh, meaningful. Okay, so I see that uh, Bali uh, just joined, so I will update uh, my attendance list. Okay, there is uh, modern control system. Yes, this is by uh, I think uh, modern control system, I have this copy, I will upload it to the, uh, uh, to the canvas uh, by Richard uh, Dorf and Robert Bishop. This is actually the required textbook. If you will look at the syllabus, you will find this is the required textbook. And advanced control systems by uh, Bonnergy and Ku, and you can, uh, See the, the photo here of the uh, moon uh, vehicle. I think this is the first uh, vehicle that landed on the moon, the photo here. Now in this course, sometimes some people, they use the MATLAB to run some studies. Uh, so my question to you, I just need some feedback, have you? Uh, uh, any of you have uh, has taken some uh, MATLAB or have you used MATLAB in previous uh, courses? If anybody has used that, please uh, uh, let me know. I need to see 
Oops. Okay. Some experience. Uh, actually says no, a little, a little one. Happy to learn more. Okay. Yeah, I know. Since uh, you know, uh, Matt, Yes, Professor. go ahead. Uh, MATLAB is like, uh, is it is it like um, uh, multi sim? Is it something like that? Like very You are talking. You are asking about MATLAB. Yeah. What is? Because I feel like there is a different thing. But I think I learned something something called multi sim where we can do body plus and everything uh, with the op amps. I don't know if that's that's what you're referring to. Yeah. No. Yeah. MATLAB is a very um, very big mathematical uh, analysis uh, and design tool. Mm -hmm. It has one, and they, uh, it comes in what they call it boxes or packages. One is the toolbox for uh, control systems. It's uh, uh, it's very nice actually. It's very handy, uh, but there is a learning curve. So if we have some uh, students who have not taken that, I may. Uh, assign just some assignments for some who want to try it. Uh, okay. This will not be mandatory. Uh, and I will give some uh, uh, handouts to show how to use uh, MATLAB. Uh, now we'll see, probably I can spare a couple of lectures or uh, offline I can send material. Uh, and if we see that there is uh, uh, an interest in that we can we can uh, uh, rely a little bit on, on MATLAB, but I don't want to make this a burden for those who have not experienced with MATLAB before. Uh, usually, when you do uh, control, we expect that people have already done some some MATLAB if we want to use it. If not, then uh, we will uh, skip that. In some other courses which I taught, I used. To, um, to use computer programming to have some students actually simulate a control system and do some analysis. That's, again, that's for people who uh, have some good computer engineering background and can do some programming. But that's uh, something we will look into and I will get some more feedback or use the Simulink. Oh yeah, Simulink is from MATLAB. Uh, and it's, in, in, yeah, I agree, it's intuitive. Uh, and it's self-explanatory. Sometimes you will just, uh, you will find the tutorials very helpful uh, inside within MATLAB. Now one caveat here is, uh, it depends if you can get uh, a free version of MATLAB. Uh, I know in the labs at Capital, uh, they do have, in the computer labs, they have math labs all, all over. But uh, previous lectures we had here, we, we used it for the digital signal processing course. Some of the students could not get access to MATLAB because they are rarely at school. Uh, and the, uh, the free version is very limited. So they couldn't, they couldn't do the, the, um, the exercises on time. So we'll see how it goes. We'll be uh, looking at this issue. Okay. So the, the, uh, some of the prerequisites, note that we are talking about here in terms of subjects rather than courses. Uh, there is differential equations, of course, we have taken these in calculus uh, two, or even there are some courses which are uh, totally devoted to uh, differential equations. The transforms, the Laplace transform, uh, Laplace is uh, is very simple transform uh, for linear functions and nonlinear functions. Uh, it's not as strong in terms of analysis as the Fourier transform, 
but it's easier to deal with. Uh, and then, of course, some basic physics, uh, physics of electronics, that's what we need. Uh, some semi-logarithmic graph papers, because some of the plots, they require some logarithmic or semi-logarithmic. Uh, linear algebra and matrices, of course, for modern control theory. Uh, that's the, basically that's for the uh, uh, linear equations, and then you use matrix to solve these linear equations. Okay, so that's about the very general ideas of what we are doing here. Now, what is control system in a nutshell or in, in a very generic terms, not in electrical engineering, uh, scientific concept, what is, oops. what's a control system? A control system basically It's a system, remember what I've said a few, a few minutes ago when we started, uh, it's a system which is used to control the operation of another system, okay? So we have, uh, I have to build a system to control the, uh, the operation, for example, the, uh, today with a coffee machine. I want to make coffee, I want in the morning, I want to make sure I wake up and my system starts doing my coffee, uh, starts actually bringing water into my pot, and then uh, uh, turning on the, uh, uh, the uh, electrical power, uh, adding some coffee based on some uh, in, uh, measures I have supplied, and then eventually uh, there is a time it keeps checking the temperature and the boiling and certain uh, uh, parameters. And then at some point it stops the, the process. So that's a really a control, control system. So it's a control system, it's a system which controls the operation of another system. And uh, another way of looking at it, it, just actually it's not other way. It's adding a feature. You see, it's a system, again, not that we start, a system is a collection of components, that's what the system is, that is designed to achieve a certain purpose. It's just like the financial system. These are many uh, banks, financial institutions, uh, money, monetary funds, uh, Fed Reserve, all of these components eventually are designed to make sure that people have uh, uh, money and they can buy and sell things with. That's the, the idea. Uh, a system of computing system. These are components like processor, memory, input, output devices, which collaborate in a certain manner and based on certain algorithms to provide some computation to compute things faster, let's say even. Uh, and that's what a system is. So the second definition of a control system, it's, it's a system that can regulate itself and another system. So it can regulate actually uh, like the uh, voltage controllers. So this voltage controller, it is used to make sure that it can provide a certain voltage level to other devices, let's say uh, a 12 DC uh, output, I want to make sure that I continuously provide the 12 DC. So I'm controlling other system by feeding it and making sure that it receives 
a certain uh, uh, electric power. Uh, every now and then, my uh, internal output of this small control, because of the temperature, the heat, etc., some deterioration happens in some of the uh, within the elements itself. So I uh, change and regulate the process which allows me to produce the 12 DC output. So that's, uh, I regulate myself and I regulate some other system. Or I would say it's a device in general. So the a system is a device at the end of the day or a set of devices. So it can be a collection uh, to do what? To manage, command, direct or regulate the behavior of other devices or systems. Uh, now this word other, that's not necessarily true of uh, devices and systems, including this device. Actually, the, the, the one who made this definition, he, because he defined a control system is a device, so it's part of these devices or systems, including my own device. So a device that's for a set of devices to manage, command, direct, or regulate the behavior of devices. This could be uh, myself, my own device, I am as a device, and the other uh, systems which I need to, to control. So basically, that's in, in a very generic term. See, here we did not in, include Laplace transform, we did not talk about Fourier transform, we did not say whether this is a linear system or non-linear system, uh, we did not say this is controllable or observable, we just say what is, what is it that we want to do with the control system? We want to regulate the behavior uh, of one or more systems. Think of uh, uh, like ventilators these days, uh, the days of Corona, which people have been talking a lot about uh, ventilators, uh, availability of them or not. So a, a ventilator at the end of the day uh, is meant to regulate and control the, the, uh, the flow of oxygen into the uh, into certain pipes that will go to the to the human lungs. So that's uh, so it, it, the the whole ventilator. All of this is about making sure there is. I take uh, as an input air from the uh, uh, from the surrounding environment, or maybe from uh, an oxygen uh, uh, tank or pipe which has some uh, oxygen, usually it comes in, in a form of liquid, and then convert that to, uh, uh, to a gas form and pump it at a certain uh, flow level. And the whole issue of the ventilator controller is to make sure that this flow of oxygen goes at a certain rate based on a feedback that I use from the uh, patient who is uh, who's using the ventilator. So, so it's a system that regulates something. I regulate the flow of oxygen or I regulate uh, natural, if you look at the uh, uh, God-made systems, not man-made systems, when we eat uh, some fruits or uh, have some, uh, take some uh, uh, sugar, uh, in our bodies, the, there is a system with, with, the, with the brain in charge will find that the, the level of sugar or glucose has reached a certain level, let's say uh, 200 milli uh, particles in a uh, uh, cubic centimeter or, uh, or in a gram or in a gram of blood there is uh, 100 milligrams of sugar, for example. Then the brain, which is our control unit here, will send an order to the liver and say, please uh, dispense this amount of insulin to, in order to uh, uh, 
uh, to take the, the uh, glucose and burn it in the cells to make energy. So that's a control system uh, which regulates the, uh, the uh, generation and the consumption of insulin in the, uh, in the blood. Now, when that control fails or does not work properly, then you will find that <clears throat> the level of glucose in the, in the blood of a patient <clears throat> uh, remains higher than a certain level because the control system failed to regulate the, uh, the, uh, the generation and the consumption of the insulin. So that's uh, a good example of uh, the natural control system. Now, the irony here, if you come to think about it from control perspective, in control system, you would have thought that if it was you as an uh, electrical engineer who was solving the, uh, the diabetic, diabetic, uh, diabetic problems in patients, probably you would have solved it, solved it much more efficiently than what the doctors or pharmacists do. Because uh, uh, you understand the nature of control and the systems and the transforms that control these things, probably you would come up with, uh, with better solutions. Although it applies to uh, uh, medicals, but you can uh, do it using your uh, mathematical and uh, control theory uh, concepts. Now, <clears throat> some definitions. I was talking about the, what is a system? System actually is an interconnection of elements and devices for a desired purpose. It's interconnection of elements, whatever these elements are. Uh, as I said, uh, a computer system is an interconnection of processors, memory, uh, hard drive, uh, keyboard, mouse, screen, and all of this interconnection between them, or the uh, collaboration of these units, they give us the <coughs> a purpose. And this purpose is a computation of a certain algorithm. I have to compute a certain algorithm. Let's say, uh, make uh, uh, multiplication of uh, floating point real numbers, where you will uh, add the exponents and multiply them and this is, uh, and do this uh, iterated in multiple times until you, until you get a multiplication. So that's the, uh, uh, what a system is. Now a control system, it's now an interconnection of components forming a system configuration that will provide a desired response. Now, note that we change the word from desired purpose and objective to desired response. So, uh, so I'm responding. So if, if my control system, I'm controlling, let's say, an, a drone. So my control system will see a response of the drone. If the drone has gone a bit faster, more than it should, because the, it's flying with the flow of air, in the same direction of the airflow, so it's getting more speed. I don't want it to go more speed because if it goes more speed, probably the uh, the uh, fans it has they will run faster than what I think what I need, and then eventually they may break because the the motor that controls the uh, uh, the fans may not be able to handle higher speeds. So the response here is I need a desired response to slow down the speed of this drone or the uh, speed of the fans at the end of the day, because that's what make it uh, drive or fly faster. So here we changed, if you see, it's an interconnection of components, true, instead of saying elements or devices, which is the same. I form a system configuration, so I will go back to a system, so this is a system, but a certain configuration. 
which will provide a desired response. Very general definition, but it's, it's a valid one. Now the process here, there is a process which we can, it's a device, it's a plant for example, a factory plant, or system under control. It's something that's being controlled. That's the, the process is what I want to control. The input and output relationship here for the process represent the cause and effect relationship of the process. So if I put an input, this is a cause, I make the process behave in a certain manner. So that's what we mean by that. It's, uh, so the process is what I want to control. Uh, let's say in uh, consider a nuclear engineering lab where uh, a process is the uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, dispensing of radiated uh, uh, radiative material for example the enriched uranium that's my process so my input will be let's say I will I will ask this to open a valve uh, where the dispenser is, and then some radiation, radiated material would be dis dis uh, dispensed into the reactor. So that, that's my input and, the, and that's the output. So and the process is the, the ability to make some uh, control of this dispensing Radiating, radiating material. Okay, so that's, those are basic definitions here. Now in the definitions we will frequently use controlled variable and let me put their manipulated variable, two, two variables. There is a controlled and there is manipulated. The controlled variable it's the quantity or condition that is measured and controlled. Controlled variable, it's the output of the control system, like here, what we had. The output of the process, that's my controlled variable. So uh, like in the dispensing of radiation, radiative, uh, radiating material, will be, let's say, the quantity and how many, how many milligrams per unit time should be dispensed, or in the refrigerator, it's the temperature within the refrigerator. It should be, let's say, around uh, plus uh, five degrees uh, Celsius. But in the freezer, it should be about zero or minus uh, two uh, degrees. So that's a controlled variable. Now, the manipulated variable, it's the variable or the quantity that allows you to adjust the control variable to the level you want. So I want to affect here, to affect the value of the control device. For example, take the refrigerator as the example. My control variable would be the, the, the uh, temperature and the, the, the manipulated variable, which I play with, is the uh, uh, amount of <coughs> uh, free on gas or nitrogen gas which I uh, uh, dispense in the uh, pipes of the uh, refrigeration that allows the, uh, the temperature to, to remain cool or to, to, uh, to be warmer. And this is the same for air conditioning. Air conditioning I want to control when I say I put I set my AC to let's say uh, 75 degrees, that's my control variable. My uh, manipulated variable, which is my control unit, is to uh, make sure that it will, uh, uh, the compressor, which will, it will compress the air so in a manner uh, that it will cool it. So this compression level is my, con my manipulated variable. And the control actually is now becomes very handy. Uh, it means I measure the control variable of the system and I apply the manipulated variable or the changes to the manipulated variable to the system. 
so that I correct or limit the deviation of the measured value from a desired value. So let's say if my, uh, 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 my system is the AC, air conditioning system, air conditioning unit, and my control variable is the temperature, I want it to be around 75 degrees. So uh, with the manipulated variable, I adjust my manipulated variable, I configure it, I uh, uh, raise the pressure or release the pressure or the, the compressor so that the deviation from the 75 degrees remain within an accepted value. So it's, let's say plus minus 5% is accepted. So 75 degrees, if I get 75, 77, I'm okay. If I get 75, uh, I'm okay, So or 73. So between two degrees, above two degrees, minus, I'm okay. If it goes beyond that, I start manipulating using my manipulated variable to bring it back to where it was. So this is the whole issue of the control, is to make sure that the control variable remains within the, the limits of uh, the, within the limit, within a certain pre-configured limit uh, of the original, we call it the nominal value of the, uh, uh, the control variable. And that, by the way, can be applied to mechanical, electrical system, uh, social system, economic system, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to keep, let's say, the economic growth to be always uh, within the 5% range, range plus minus uh, uh, 0.1%, for example. So you will see if your uh, uh, economic growth goes beyond the 6%, then you will slow down the production uh, or the import export, you can manipulate so many variables here, it's, it's a multivariate, multivariant analysis, multivariable analysis. Uh, or if the uh, uh, economic growth goes, let's say 3%, which is way too below the expected value or the preset value, then you have to, uh, let's say, generate cash, reduce the interest rates, uh, do some easy on taxes so people spend more money and so on. So you can do all types of things with the manipulated variable so you bring the system to its nominal value. Okay. Uh, more definitions. Here, what we have, the process that, remember the, when we have the process, you have an input and output. So the manipulated variable comes from the controller. So that's what my controller is. I give it input, my electricity, my ampere, my voltage, or my air pressure, uh, whatever I do, uh, it gives me a certain value of the variable, the manipulated variable, I raise, the temperature, I uh, reduce it down, uh, give it more uh, amperes, more voltage, more watts, and then at the output here, uh, this will be adjusted. Okay, so that's the uh, process we are talking about. Now there is something called disturbance. A disp disturbance uh, is a signal that tends to adversely affect the value of the system. So it's an unwanted input of the system. So the input here on the left, we control that. Let's say I'm uh, uh, talk about uh, telecommunication. Uh, I am generating an input frequency so that with this frequency, I can allow people to, uh, uh, to make their phone calls. And this frequency is assigned by the government, by the, by the FCC. But then a disturbance, if someone, actually, if I can, uh, let me do that as, uh, um, uh, 
on a new slide, that's what I want to do. So here, I'm sending uh, a frequency, and let me get my frequency from my uh, Google Assistant, who comes to my aid in the time I need it. I'll just say an image. frequency Okay. See, this is a perfect shape sinusoidal wave. It's a frequency. Now, and this will be coming as an input to this device. Put it this way, make it thick. Now the disturbance, the disturbance, I may have some other, uh, let's see. Something like this can this comes from different sorts. The idea here is okay, so the idea this is my. Uh, real input, that's the regular input here. So supposedly I'm feeding my system, this is my uh, control. So I'm feeding my system with this signal, and this could be my uh, radio walkie-talkie. So I just want to uh, use this with a signal, and then from here, uh, the output will be after certain application, uh, I mean, uh, 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 ampli amplification, so this becomes uh, amplified, and then uh, adding some data to it to the signal, so this is called modulation. I modulate data on top of signal. This should reach uh, uh, the at, uh, radio station somewhere where you receive the signal, and you will hear the voice of the uh, your favorite song or uh, uh, moderator, something of this sort. Now, this guy, this comes unwanted signal, Okay, this is called disturbance.
This could be coming from This could be coming from uh, any source. It could, it could come from, let's say, the uh, uh, high pressure electric voltage uh, cables. If you have seen, especially in some places, some cities or some places along the highways, you still can see uh, big cables flying around. Today, most of the time, most, uh, most of they have been putting them underground. Uh, but there was a time when the, our highways and the uh, lands were, uh, were saturated with all of these cables. Uh, we call them the high voltage uh, cables. And those that actually they generate frequencies. It may not be as smooth as this one, but this is disturbance. So here at this control, you have two signals instead of one. You have the original signal at a certain frequency. Loss, disturbance, signal. So now this disturbance, it makes this output here a little bit unwanted. So you need to, uh, to take care of that. So that's why we call the disturbance. It's a signal that tends to adversely affect the value of the system, unwanted. Uh, if a disturbance is generated within the system, it's called internal, internal disturbance. Otherwise, an external disturbance comes from outside. For example, this is external, this is external disturbance. Uh, so this is, External. This is external. Now, internal disturbance will be something that happens uh, from within do it this way. So this is internal for uh, disturbance. Internal disturbance, for example, so you actually, you feed this sinusoid signal, it goes inside here, and then you have this circuit, actually it's an RC circuit, re resistance, capacitance, so because the, the, the capacitor or the resistor may deteriorate. This is, let's say, deterioration of uh, internal elements such as resistor, capacitor. Now, of course, transistors to this transistors tend to de deteriorate uh, less uh, uh, f frequently than the, uh, uh, than the resistor and the capacitor because the resistor and capacitor, these are really uh, materials. And those materials, no matter how much fabrication you have, because of the heat and the voltage and the currents that goes through them, there are particles from inside, there the physics actually, the natural physics of things tend to, uh, to change its characteristics. And once the characteristics change, then this, that's called internal disturbance. So the uh, control system has to take care of both uh, the uh, uh, internal as well as uh, uh, internal as well as uh, external uh, uh, disturbance. Uh, external dis disturbance, uh, it's usually they use filters, use a blockage, uh, 
just like any system, any physical system, if you want, let's say, to reduce the amount of uh, air coming into your house, you can close windows. You just, uh, that's a disturbance for your conditioning, for your air conditioning system. So uh, you are driving in a car, uh, your, your AC is on, and then the rear window uh, is open uh, in a hot, uh, in, in a summer hot day, uh, that's a disturbance. Now all you have to do is to, to close the window and you shut down the external disturbance of your system. So now your AC can work efficiently. Uh, whereas uh, internal error or internal disturbance is when your uh, AC compressor runs out of the gas, of the, the free on gas, which is the uh, uh, which is used to cool uh, your system. That will be an inter, uh, interior or internal disturbance. Okay. Uh, guys, want to take five minutes break? Is are you okay with five minutes break? That works. Okay. So let's uh, do some break here. Okay, good. So we can have some uh, sip of coffee and do some errands. Let me pause my recording. Please remind me to... Uh, Professor, your your uh, your mic is on a mute. Thank you. And my camera too. All right. Thanks. So let's talk about the uh, continue here our discussion. The uh, types of control systems that exist. Some of them are natural which means they do exist in nature. They are God-made. This is how uh, God created the world, this, the universe. Uh, you have uh, hundreds of millions of stars, moons, planets. They keep moving, rotating, and they keep in the same track. Uh, Any time uh, there is a disturbance that keeps, takes, let's say, a planet or uh, a moon, to move away from its orbit with the, all the controls of the gravity and the, uh, uh, this universal type of uh, event, to push it back to the, uh, where it is. In the human body, uh, that's how the human body regulates the temperature. Uh, within the body, there is a whole system. When your temperature goes up, things start happening to uh, uh, make your sweat and the sweat evaporates and gets out and it, it cools down. There is a natural ventilation that uh, takes place within the human body. Uh, some, now the, uh, the, um, man-made control systems. These are the systems which we do. This is the um, like a water system that keeps a certain valve which opens and closes in order to fill this with water or with liquid and until a certain level. The airplane, you have the uh, speed brake, you have the wings movement, up and down, you have the tail, uh, and all of these control units that we 
people have uh, made. Uh, this is a manual control system. There is another way of classifying. Now, this is a, we, we are trying to classify control systems and understand them. So we say there could be there could be a natural, there could be man-made, there could be manual, there could be automatic. Manual here, let's say if I have a fan uh, that I want to or uh, water level control, let's say uh, I come into a room, the room I find it, uh, I read the temperature myself, I see oh it's a bit warm, so this needs some to turn on a fan. So I go to the fan and turn it on. I control the room temperature here by turning on and off the fan and by myself I'm measuring or sensing the uh, what the temperature is. I say, oh, it feels hot, so I can just go and turn on the fan. This is uh, the fan. This is manual. Uh, water level control. Here, this guy is. He has. Uh, he's controlling the valve. It's a very heavy valve. That's why he uh, looks like a, a steering that he rotates right or left. So the uh, uh, water can flow in or out this big tank. And he's watching through this hole to see where the level is. So if the level goes beyond the, uh, this value, he opens the valve so he can uh, reduce the level of water or liquid. That's a manual control. Automatic control systems where all of this process is done uh, using some uh, electrical uh, modulators or actuators to measure and, and work automatically. The uh, home water heating system, like the geyser or the, uh, the furnace, uh, this is the one that keeps checking the temperature. If the temperature goes below a certain level, then it allows the gas to come in. It takes gas from the, uh, uh, from the gas tank or from the, or from the pipes. And then, and based on that, then the, uh, the, uh, you can raise the level of temperature. Uh, you can heat it, that's how it works. Or the AC, same thing. This is automatic control, you just sit. You go to the panel, you set some parameters. You say, let's say the fan speed, medium temperature to be, let's say uh, at uh, 75 degrees uh, or maybe 68 if it's too hot outside. So you can do, you set it and then you go. Then you come back at uh, our data, you will find that the temperature in the room, if you measure it, is uh, whatever you wanted it to be. The human body temperature control this is automatic, but this is this is nature natural. So the automatic can be can be man-made and can be uh, uh, nature natural system. Another class classification of control systems, something called open loop control system, or sometimes they call non-feedback, no feedback or open loop. Uh, you have the control li like this, your controller and the process, it's one way, you don't have a feedback, you don't have a connection coming from the output back to the input to see, to adjust your input. So I just, uh, set the, the controller and let it go and you don't make an adjustment you assume that it will it will work fine so the output has no effect on the control action the output is neither measured nor feedback so i don't need even to measure it so I, if i'm not going to use it as a feedback why measure it? so this is called open loop control system an example would be a washing machine, toaster, electric fan, microwave oven. All of these are one way, open loop. They don't, 
like with the washing machine, you don't get a feedback from the washing machine that the, the, the clothes have been cleaned uh, sufficiently or the, uh, uh, you need um, to adjust the flow of water into it so you don't have that. Now there are some new uh, washing machines that do have some feedback but in general, the, the classic ones, they don't. In open loop control systems, reference input is not compared with measured output. So uh, for each reference input, there is fixed operating condition. So let's say you will say, if I set my, uh, my power, my uh, voltage or ampere at let's say five amperes uh, with uh, 20 watts, then my system will work in the following manner until there is a time you stop it without having a feedback. So the accuracy of the system depends on calibration. So you calibrate your system to make sure that the input you uh, provide is the, the, the input you want it to be until the end of the operation. Now the performance of the open loop system, it's affected by the presence of the disturbances. So if there is a disturbance come in, after you leave, let's say you, you set up your condition, you, certain things to, uh, to work uh, and the disturbance let's say the disturbance uh, happens somebody adds more uh, pressure uh, to the uh, to the system pushes it with a, with a hand or with something it will cause the system to generate undesired results or if there is a variation in the operating or environmental conditions that allow your system to actually uh, not, I should not say fail, it will not generate the desired output. As, as long as the input is exactly as you planned it, then things will be fine. Okay, so now uh, compared to open loop control system, as you would guess, we have the closed loop, closed loop control system. So this is the loop now. So here, the loop goes something like this. No, not like that. Okay. So this is the whole loop. It goes from the input, output, and comes back, keeps going. So let me take this out now, I don't need it. Actually, this is a better way of doing it. Just trying to make this 
Cadê? So this is the loop in the uh, red uh, lines. That's how it's closed. It's called the closed loop. So you utilize feedback to compare the actual output, this is the, uh, the output, to the desired output response. That's the, so I, I measure the output, and then I see if this desired output is, uh, uh, that's what I want, let's say if I want an output to be, uh, let's say an uh, uh, ampere, five ampere, I measure it, I find it that this is 4.5, so I go with back to this comparator. So the comparator here says, okay, look, the output is uh, uh, 0.5 ampere less than the expected. So now this input, assume that this input is a voltage, I'm applying, let's say, uh, 110 volts, but it actually turned out to be 105 volts, so it's not coming very well. So I raise my now input, make sure to say, okay, uh, there is some deterioration with the input. I increase my input value. So now it, the output probably now, it gives more than five amperes, let's say 5.2, ah, let's say I give more uh, power than I should. So now you have the feedback, then you adjust, you reduce that, you keep going up and down in a, in a manner until you reach what we call the steady state that's exactly what I want from my output. So it's uh, uh, feedback, so that, that's why we call it, it's a feedback system, or an, a closed loop. Another way of looking at the uh, control system, uh, in, in this system here we have one input, controlling my output. Here, I could have multiple, let's say the temperature, I have the humidity and the pressure, those are the things which I, uh, uh, I apply, these are my inputs. And then there is the controller here, and I generate my output, based on the output comes back, I say, okay, I have to adjust my temperature, I have to adjust my humidity, I have to adjust my pressure. This becomes a bit more complicated because it's, you have to take a very large number of combinations between these three, but nevertheless, this is a control system. It's called multi-variable control system. You have many variables. Today, this is uh, very common with the ICT, or call it Internet of Things, where you have many sensors on the ground on a certain area in the system. And uh, use the sensors readings to adjust the input. So actually in the, the above system here, which I, I have it here, the temperature could be coming from a sensor, the humidity from another sensor, the pressure from another sensor. Based on these readings, we do the, uh, the, uh, the comparator, we do the uh, comparison, then we change the value of the input to the controller so that the output will be adjusted accordingly. The output is our uh, what we call the measured variable, and those ones, the manipulated variables. Now, this is the feedback control system again, a system that maintains a prescribed relationship between the output here and the input. There is a relationship. Then we use the difference, the difference between the measured output and the uh, input, we call this an error. So we expect this to be 
to be, let's say, zero the difference, which means uh, this should be, uh, that's exactly what I want from the output, a certain value. If that value is uh, uh, not what's expected, then we measure the value, the, the error. So the error could be plus, could be minus, could be positive or negative. And then that's what we call the error value. Sometimes you have a toler uh, tolerance so the feedback can be positive or negative. And here you can do some, uh, you can have some error tolerance level. You say, okay, I'm not going to have a perfect system, but let's say if the error is within 1% plus minus, then I am okay. If it's above that, then I'm not. Okay, there is another type of uh, control system called the servo or servo mechanism, which is a feedback control system against uh, feedback. So it's closed loop in which the output is some mechanical position, velocity or acceleration. The output itself is, depends on the physical characteristics of, the, of a certain device like antenna. This is an antenna. So you want the antenna to be rotated in a certain manner so you can measure the uh, input signal or output frequency signal or power from the antenna. Uh, or you can move it to the right or to the left or rotate it uh, around a certain angle so you get the uh, correct uh, signal or output you want. So the, the, these are the types of different types of control systems based on the nature of the design or the purpose uh, of the system or the input and the output. Now, we have different classification. Uh, now we are getting uh, into, the, into the mathematical version. This is our process again here. That's my process. This is my input. This is my output to the process. And the input is a certain function of time, like u t, and the output is y of t. Here. So, if my uh, my input here, my my y of t is let's say minus two y of t plus one, or it could be three y t plus one. The three times u of t is goes linear. Oops linear on the uh, upward. This one goes linear downward because it is negative value. But nevertheless, this is called linear. This is a linear because the y of t changes based on the value of u in a linear manner. So you just multiply it by a constant. It's the same u. You did not change it. Just multiply it by three and then add five to it. This is called a linear time system. Or it could be a nonlinear. So this is the value here. So over time, let's say the adhesion characteristics of a certain road, over a certain uh, time or, ba or based on some creep uh, condition, this is how the function it changes in a nonlinear form. It's called nonlinear relationship. So this is nonlinear system. Also, the linear system now can be time invariant or time variant. Let's say time invariant here. Y and U, they cha Y changes in terms of U, but for the same T time unit. Uh, uh, the the result of Y does not change in time in a different manner than you. Let's say here, if, uh, if this was time variant, like this function below, y of t equal to y minus 3t. So this is called time variant, which means the, the output y depends on the time. Here, the output does not depend on the time. It just depends on the value of u, because t is the same for y and u. So this could be a time variant or time invariant. And we will 
discuss these systems more as we go, but these are classifications. It can be continuous like this one, or it could be discrete like this one. So the time here, my response x of t to a certain value is going to be continuous in time, or it can be discrete at certain instances. So this is called discrete. It can be deterministic like this one, x and y. Deterministic is like triangular, triangular, triangular at a certain frequency, certain amplitude. This one is also, oops. This one is like a square function and it repeats at a certain period, which means the frequency is across the whole function is the same. But if you have a system like this, where you have the the period is not the same. You don't repeat the signal in a, 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 in a deterministic predefined manner. And the amplitude changes over time. So it's not the same. This is called stochastic control system or chaotic, it's stochastic, random. It's not periodic, it's not symmetric, it's not deterministic. This one is deterministic. And this one is stochastic, uh, stochastic, stochastic control system. Now this is the classification of control systems. Let, let me put it this way. Let me complete this. Oops. Okay. So at the top could be natural or man-made. Man-made can be manual or automatic. Automatic can be open loop or closed loop. Closed loop can be nonlinear or, or linear. Linear can be time variant or time invariant. The nonlinear can be also time variant or time invariant. The open loop can be also linear or nonlinear. But we are not talking about time invariant or time variant because uh, it is fixed. It's not dependent on time and it doesn't run forever. There is, at some point, it will, it will finish. So that's the uh, classification of the control systems. Some examples, these are the water level float regulator. There is a water comes from here all the way down. And this is the uh, floating uh, device. And there's a steam, of course, that goes to shut to make sure that this uh, 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 float does not go beyond a certain level. And once it reaches a level, it's a predetermined level like here, then this valve will shut down, actually. So it goes up, keeps going up, 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 until this here completely blocks this valve. That's a manual control system for regulating the level of fluid in a tank by adjusting the output level. Okay, so this is the fluid output. I keep adjusting it and then I regulate the level of the fluid. The fluid comes in. If it comes uh, more than it should be, then I open up this valve and the uh, fluid goes out. Now, modern control systems, this is, for example, the uh, blood glucose and insulin levels for a healthy person. Here comes the, the uh, breakfast time. The blood gl glucose goes up a little bit. There's con uh, concentration of blood glucose. Uh, then over time, once the, by the time of lunch, the glucose level goes down. Now I eat lunch, then the glucose goes up. And then I take insulin for the dinner and the glucose remains at the lower level. It doesn't go up because of the uh, insulin. So this is the, how it works. Okay. 
This is the end of uh, lecture one here. Uh, that's what I plan to talk about today. Uh, as I said, uh, I uh, uploaded a quiz already. The quiz you will see, the quiz really is not going to test our uh, deep knowledge. It will just test our, uh, like you will see questions coming from this classification, questions on the definitions, of control systems or types of control systems, difference between feedback and non-feedback systems, uh, questions on those linear, non-linear, okay, time variant, time invariant, just to make sure that we 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 uh, absorb those uh, concepts here. So this is. Uh, so next time I will start with the second lecture and uh, I will get some examples uh, we'll, when we talk about the transfer functions. I think we'll be talking about the transfer functions, which are, we saw them, I think, where did I see the transfer function? Huh? Let's see. Yeah, here. Those are the transfer functions within this box, small box. We'll be talking about this next time. Okay, any questions for me tonight? Uh, so, so next time we just meet Monday, right? No class on Wednesday? Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll meet Monday. We will not meet Wednesday. Okay, okay. sounds good. All right. Okay, uh, thanks guys. We'll see you next week. Have a good day. So I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So the quiz that it will be on what we learned today, the yes. quiz that you posted it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it will be on this uh, lecture only. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Thanks.